What's up guys and welcome back to Madman Music. Today's gonna be a really cool episode because we're doing a cool little studio upgrade that I've been waiting to do for months. Months. I'm talking about like basically since I moved in this place. I've mentioned it in some of the vlogs that I wanted to show you guys how to make your own custom homemade sound baffles for your home studios. And this is professional quality kind of stuff. It's using all the same exact techniques that these professional sound baffle companies are using to make their sound baffles. So, what if I told you we can make this room that sounds like this, hello, hello. go from sounding super echoey to sounding like this, to sounding like this. Nice, dry, clean sounding audio. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that you're gonna need in order to make this build happen. First of all, you're gonna need some kind of insulation. It's recommended to use something that's very dense, something like Rockwall, I believe, is a brand that you can buy that's very, very dense type of insulation. Look out for that. If you're not able to find something like that, just try to find something that's as dense as possible. Not necessarily thickness, but density. So check out your local hardware store, Home Depot, something along those lines. See what they have. They may or may not have what would be the most ideal. But of course, just get what you can afford because anything is going to help when you are in a space that's reverberating as badly as my space was. You're also going to need some wood. I just used something that was similar to a 1x4. Now, I'm here in Germany. Things are in centimeters. It's a little bit different. Sizes are a little bit different. But you would probably be safe with about a 1x4 in order to make the frame. You could also use something like a sheet of MDF plywood and cut it down into strips. This would give you a nice, dense, very solid frame if that's something you were looking to go for. I just used regular wood and it worked fine for me. You're also going to need some screws, a drill, some drill bits, a stapler and some staples, and a lot of time because it is going to take some patience. So with all that being said, be sure to use proper safety equipment. I didn't because I'm an idiot. Make sure that when you're dealing with fiberglass, you're wearing gloves, possibly even eye protection, and depending on how fibrous that fiberglass is, you may even want to wear a mask. We're all used to wearing masks since COVID, so it really shouldn't be such a big deal. So now that we know what we need, let's get outside and let's get building. Let's go. All right, guys, so the first step in making sure that your sound baffles are going to work really well as far as your build goes is choosing what kind of insulation you want to use. It's highly recommended to use some kind of a insulation that's kind of dense that you can almost cut with something like a saw. You don't really want to use the kind of insulation that is really fibrous that you can pull apart easily with your hands. You want to use something that's got a little bit more girth to it. Now, the thickness, it depends on the size space that you, you're putting these baffles into. I'm going with something that was provided to me by a friend that is just about two inches thick. It actually has like a nice, it already has some kind of a covering on it. So it's already sort of bound. This is keeping this, this panel really kind of stiff. So this material that's already on here is going to help to keep this panel really sort of stiff and rigid for me while I'm building a frame around it. Now, in most cases, you probably won't find this. You, you're just going to have to work with what you got. Try to go with something that's as dense as possible and you're going to have decent results. All right, so I've saved you the process of me measuring and cutting the boards. I basically just want to build a frame around each of the panels. Now, I'm going to cut the panels to a particular length that I want for my room and then build the frames around them. It's a pretty easy procedure. After that, we're going to then wrap it with some fabric and I'll show you that when we get to it. But for now, let's go ahead and cut a piece to size and then build a frame around it.
All right, so that's about it as far as building the frame around the insulation. If your insulation is already rigid enough that it will kind of stay in place, all you have to do is build the frame basically as close as possible to the specs of that board and you're going to be able to just lift it right up and the panel should stay inside. Now remember, we're gonna wrap this with some fabric on the front side, but the back side will be open. One other thing that you can do in some cases when your insulation is not rigid and not solid is you can add some kind of like a backing support in the frame just to make it a bit more rigid, right? And bring everything together. So this is essentially one frame for our insulation sound panels. All you do is line all these things up, make sure that they're in there nice, and that's it. Now they're ready for some fabric. Let's get into it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take our panel and we're gonna wrap it in fabric. There's a few different ways to go about this. We're using fabric that's already a particular length. I know that it's gonna be wide enough or long enough on the panel to wrap around correctly, but now I gotta figure out what the width is so that it will wrap around the panels width-wise. Once we figure that out, we'll cut our fabric and staple it onto this thing. Let's do it. Okay, so like I said, the best thing to do here is measure right here, and then right here, and then the complete width-wise. This way, you know it's wide enough to go completely around the entire panel when we staple the fabric to the front. So if we check this, we got about two centimeters, we got about seven and a half centimeters, and then the complete width is 64 and a half centimeters. When you do the math on this, it's gonna round up to right about 84 centimeters. Now, of course, I'm in Europe, so that's all we gotta do these weird centimeter sticks. Weird. So let's lay out some fabric, measure it, and cut that. <laughs> You definitely want to make sure that you lay it out as flat as possible and try to get out as much of the wrinkles as possible. This way when you lay your panel down here, make it a little bit easier to stretch the fabric around and have a nice smooth looking panel. Let's get the measure. Okay, so we're going to take our sweet little centimeter stick here and we are going to measure out 84 centimeters. It's going to put us right about here. Great. Now for the fun part. So now that the fabric is ripped, we're going to go ahead and lay it back out nice and smooth, trying to get all those wrinkles out as best we can. When we do that, what we're gonna to try to do is we're gonna line up the edge of the fabric on one side to the edge of the panel itself. We're gonna to try to leave a gap so that we know how much we have to fold over the lip of the outside of the panel. Let's drop it on here and check it out. So again, we're making sure that our panel lines up here with the fabric as straight as we can, allowing enough space for us to wrap this fabric over the top of the lip of the frame. This is important because we've already measured it to do exactly that. So if we just lay it here like that, let's make sure that on both sides over here, we have enough space and it looks like it's about even. Once we have that, we can then lay the panel down. And when we do that, it should look even around all of the edges. And if it's not, give it a little tug. You know, make sure that your fabric is, again, as straight as possible underneath. And then we can start stapling. The idea when we staple, we're gonna put one staple in the middle 
on each side. So four staples, one, two, three, four, right in the middle. This way it's already pulling the middle of the fabric to each of the sides of the frame. And then we'll go in both directions, starting from the middle on each side and pulling it tight around the entire edge, making sure that our fabric stays nice and smooth. One really important thing to note with this whole process, when you staple here first, staple there next, staple there, staple there. Always going directly across. Once we do this side, we're gonna do that side, then we'll do this side, then we'll do that side, and so on and so forth. This way, it's nice, smooth, and even. All right, let's get into it. Okay, now that we've done all four sides, we're gonna start in the middle, pulling the fabric tight around the frame, and every couple of inches or centimeters, whatever you use, you're gonna pop a little staple in there, just like so. Working from the middle to the edge. So when you get all the way to the edge here, don't staple all the way to the end because we're gonna have to do something with the fabric in the corners that I'm gonna show you in a little bit. So now that we've stapled this side, we'll staple this side. All right, so now that we've gotten all this stuff stapled and we're down here to the very end, we gotta do something with this flabby fabric that's stuck down here, right? What we're gonna do is, you're just gonna take it and let it lay loose, open it up, spread it out like that, and take it from the middle and just very gently lay it over the top. There's no need to go really tight here because we're gonna fold some other stuff around and it actually will create like a very weird wrinkle if we do it too tight here. So just lightly hold it up there, give it a staple. And then you're gonna roll these around underneath so that the top ends up laying nice and flat across the edge. Pop a, pop a, uh, a little staple there, put another one in all those little spots that you missed along the way, and you do the same thing on the other side. Just roll that fabric so that it lines up nice and flush on the edge. Pop a staple. And that's it. You kind of can't put enough staples in this thing. I go every two or three inches or so and that seems to be kind of enough, but it's going to depend on the material that you're using and also, you know, how many staples you feel like putting into this thing. I don't really like stapling things all that much, so I'm trying to do it as minimally as possible. <laughs> And that's it. Wipe this thing off because I'm too lazy to put some kind of a clean drop cloth down. Brush off all the dust or whatever's on it and we're ready to hang this thing. Let's put these things on the wall. So it's important to note that when you are figuring out where you are going to be placing the panels on the wall, what you should do is sit in your normal seated position at your desk and have your girlfriend, friend, whoever, have somebody hold a mirror and run it along the wall, just like so, until you can see speakers. When you see speakers in the mirror, you know that this is a reflection point from where you are actually sitting at your desk, and that's where you should place a panel. This way, any of the reflections coming from the speaker, bouncing off the wall, going to you, will then get absorbed by the panel itself. Now, I've already gone ahead and figured out where my panel needs to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out where I'm gonna place my anchors and my screws to hang the panels. Now, there's a few different methods of hanging things on the wall. Imagine it's kind of like a picture, but the thing is, is these panels can get incredibly heavy, 
So if you do this at home, if you have a wall with drywall panels, make sure that you find the studs. Make sure that you're using proper anchor support to hold the weight of these panels or else they're just gonna rip off the wall and take a giant chunk of the wall down with it. So be sure to do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make some marks and drill some holes and get my panel on the wall. Let's do that. Okay, so now that I've got my first spot where I'm gonna drill for one of my screws, cause I'm gonna basically hang this on two screws for now. Again, there's a lot of different ways to hang things. I might change this later, but for now as a quick and easy, kind of slap these things up on the wall. I'm basically gonna drill some holes, put some anchors, and then have these screws where this will actually hang just like a picture on the wall. But now that I found the one spot for the first hole that I'm gonna drill, a little pro tip is if you take a level, you take a piece of tape, measure this thing, find dead center on the level, and then measure out from there so that you can go, boom, I want this here, and then 20 centimeters away, I can have it and make it perfectly level. A little pro tip. Let's do this. And now, power tools. All right, now we've made a complete mess. Let's put some anchors in there. All right, now that I've got some holes drilled, it's time to slap a panel up there and see how it sits. And voila. I present to you a sound baffle. It's that simple. I'm just gonna take these things and go the rest of the way around the room. See you in a minute. We can make this room go from sounding super echoey to this, a room that's nice and dry sounding. It's really important to have good sound treatment in a room that for one, you're mixing in because it will help you have clearer, more responsive mixes, but it also helps for you YouTubers out there that are doing this kind of thing where you're talking and there's all this room ambience that is normally in all of my videos and I've been working really hard to get rid of. So if this is something for you, take these steps. It's really not too difficult. It's not overly expensive and it's worth every single penny. If you've enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, snag yourself some swag from the merch shop, become a patron. Do all this stuff, it helps the channel greatly. And we will see you in the next video. Peace!